scripture reading today is from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will, will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your running and going, both now and forevermore. Please stand for the second. Yes. Timothy, 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 3, 14, and 4 by 5, 4 to 5. I could see it without the glasses, now I can't. <laughs> I lost my place. Um, but as for you, continued in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you have become, sorry, and, and those from whom you have learned it, and how you have infancy, you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I will give you this change. Preach the word. He prepared it in season, and in out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside our myths. <clears throat> but you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Pastor Nori took me to task. She gave me a task <clears throat> doing the sermon today. Uh, one of my selections are 2 Timothy 3.14. Our son and his wife Peg are here. Our son's name is Timothy. He's our second son. He was born on March 14th, which is 3.14. So it, it's definitely his... his um, <laughs> Scripture. <clears throat> being very proud of myself for at my age and being able to text and even using the old fashioned flip cell phone method, I was getting biblically smart. I started storing scriptures in my cell phone to pass along with a text message to others. One of the first ones I put in is I liked the scripture and felt it was good wording to pass on to anyone having trouble. I copied it from somewhere, and I know not where. It was, be strong and of good courage, Deuteronomy 31.16. I used it several times, and until I used it with an old friend who was extremely knowledgeable of Bible passages, this came back to me, haunt me. My friend came back with, I thought that was Joshua 1.6. Lo and behold, she was right as I had been sending from Deuteronomy 31, 16, 
you are about to die and join your ancestors. <laughs> Needless to say, I changed that phrase, and having learned my lesson, maybe, to double-check future ones. You see, God has us learn from our mistakes. Our church is a transforming church. I am sure some of you can testify that it can transform a family of out of, from out of chaos at home to sane sensibility in a 10 or 20, 20 minute drive from home to St. Luke's on Sunday morning. My transformation has taken over 70 years. I was christened in an Episcopal church where I was, when I was about two years old. At that time, there was a group that was being christened and the group, except for me, were babes in arms. I understand that I was a typical or more than typical two-year-old, meaning I caused a bit of commotion in that christening service. My mother, a registered nurse, was my mentor. She taught Sunday school in our town at Stratum's Community Church, taking me in tow each Sunday. I couldn't ride the Sunday school bus, my envy of the kids that could, as mummy was driving to church and I would ride with her. Do you wonder why she didn't want me out of her sight? I was a tomboy, coming home from school each day with one dress tie torn out of my dress that my mother had to fix each night as I only had one dress to wear for the week. I was known to all the women in town of Stratum as they were all part of the church and made sure they kept an eye on me and reported into my mother anything out of line that I did. I was the first child in town to carve a four-letter word in the wood siding of a one-room schoolhouse. <laughs> to quote the words of Anne of Green Gables, it's easy to be wicked, isn't it? That was me. My mother had a massive stroke when I was 13 years old and was bedridden for the last 17 years of her life. My father, who was 61 years old at that time, faithfully took care of my mother at home for as long as he could for the next 10 years before having to put her into a nursing home for the last seven years. When my, with my mother having the stroke when I was 13 left me to grow up on my own, <clears throat> I went on to be known as a wild teenager, much to the chagrin of my mother's church lady friends and two old maid aunts, one of who was a big influence on my belief in God as I grew later on. Fortunately, when I was 17, God felt perhaps a stalwart U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant might help me follow in what had been my mother's footsteps. And at that time, my father signed papers that I could get married at age 17. And now my wild days were over. God gave me this strong-willed, wild teenager three children by the time I was 21. Needless to say, I don't remember coming tw becoming 21, as many do today. I followed that wonderful Air Force man <clears throat> to North Africa, Mississippi, New Mexico, and Maryland, tugging three children in tow. God allowed those three children to give me a taste of my own medicine that I had given my parents. <laughs> Over the years, I had many discussions with God, some on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea, in or on many of other different places, usually outside, and sometimes angry at God for what happened to my mother. And yes, now discussions thanking him for coming to my rescue all the time. Even to the point of reminding me that a red light I'm driving towards at full speed is there. In 2003, God led us to, from Maryland to New Hampshire and on to St. Luke's United Methodist Church, where I hope I am now following in the footsteps that God and my mother started many years ago. Knowing that she can now, now know, I finally made the transformation, or almost made it. I'm sure there are still times that both my mother and God shudder a bit. However, I think they're not holding their breaths. I love the old gospel hymns that take me back to my mother and how I was led. I became a forever Methodist in 1980, but God isn't done with me yet. As you can see, God is patient, persistent, promising, and wonderful. In closing, I suggest at this very moment, someone needs to know that God is watching over them. And whatever they are going through, 
they will be a better person in the end. May God bless this church and the wonderful people he has put here, helping so many, many people, including me.